we will be replaced by someone who is very unlikely to be as benign as we are. And the world has forgotten what it's like to live under tyranny. And if you live under tyranny that has nuclear weapons and all kind of weapons of mass destruction, it's going to be even worse than it has been in the past. So we need not only to remain at the pinnacle, but we need to reestablish power structure in this nation. At the pinnacle of power is the people, not the government. This is what we have to change. Unfortunately, what has happened is that people have been beaten into submission. You know, my wife and I travel across the country in a different state every day. Uh, red states, blue states, north, south, east, west, huge enthusiastic crowds, people coming out and saying, you mean there's somebody else who thinks the way I do? You mean I'm not weird because I believe these things? Because I have these values and principles? Because I think logically and use common sense? Because the secular progressives want you to think that. You know, Saul Alinsky had 13 rules and the rules for radicals. The first rule, make the majority believe that their opinion is the minority opinion and that your opinion is the majority opinion. If you can co-opt the media in the process, you're far ahead of the game. That's exactly what's been done. And people are now sort of like looking around. Can I say that? Uh, can I do this? This is total crap. That's what it is. Okay? And it's, time. it's really time for the people we the people of America to stop being afraid of the government and to put it in its place. In, it, in its place. Now this is not this is not to say that I don't like government or that I despise government. Government plays a very important role a very important role when in fact they believe in the Constitution. That's the problem. When they begin to neglect the Constitution, when they begin to impose their own will, when they look at laws of the land and they say, okay, I think I'll enforce this one, this one I won't. When they begin to treat people differently, they say, these are my friends, you don't have to do that, but all the rest of you have to do something. When they say, the people and the, and the executive branch and the legislative branch don't have to participate in certain programs, but everybody else has to. When they give businesses exemptions, but the common people, they say, no, you have to do it. You know, that's not America. That's Russia. That's someplace else. How do we allow that to happen in this nation? And I have to tell you, you know, Obamacare is really what has happened in this nation since slavery. And it is, in a way, it is slavery, in a way, because, because it is making all of us subservient to the government. And it was never about health care. It was about control. And that's, that's why... That's why when this administration took office, it didn't matter that the country was going off the cliff economically. All forces were directed toward getting this legislation passed. And, and why did they want to pass it so badly? Well, as I said the, the other night on television, Vladimir Lenin, one of the fathers of socialism, communism, said that socialized medicine is the keystone to the establishment of a socialist state. So this is, this is, you know, some people say, oh, come on, you're being paranoid. How could anybody bring up something like that? I would say if you know anything about history, how could you not bring it up? And, you know, that's the problem. You know, when in 18, 
1831, when Alexis de Tocqueville came to America to study this nation, why did he come? Because the Europeans were fascinated. How could a nation barely 50 years old already be competing with them on virtually every level? That was impossible. Nothing like that had ever occurred before. And after he looked at the government, he said, let's look at their educational system. And he was blown away. Anybody finishing the second grade was completely literate, could read the newspaper, could have a political discussion, could tell them how the government worked. You only found that in the aristocracy in Europe. And when you stop and think about it, why do you think those early pioneers were able to push across a rugged and hostile terrain from sea to sea? because they were well educated. They knew how to build structurally sound bridges. They knew how to build roads. They knew how to build dams. They knew how to build storage containment centers. They knew how to invent things when a problem came up because they were extremely well educated. This is something that we must get to again, and it is absolutely critical that we do it pronto. 30% of people in this country do not finish high school. Think about that. We're not producing the number of technological people that we need. And that's why a lot of the tech companies have to go to India and Pakistan and China and Japan to recruit people. We need to change that. And our high schools, our counselors need to be directing our students toward the right kinds of careers. And in our colleges and universities, we need to hire more scientists and, and mathematicians and direct people that way, and maybe fewer sociologists and radical people who send people off in the wrong direction. But you know, when the Tocqueville finished that big two-volume set, what impressed him the most was the fact that we taught in our public schools values and principles. And we were not ashamed to use the Bible as the source of those values and principles. And you know, many other nations of the world, they're not afraid of their religious beliefs. They quite proudly proclaim them. But somehow, we have come to believe that we are not a Judeo-Christian nation. We have some leaders who have even made such a proclamation. They don't know anything about the founding of this nation. And, you know, in, in our last book, America the Beautiful, we wrote all, many of the stories about incredible things that happened during the founding of this nation that were supernatural throw God out of our nation, he will neglect us, and we will go down the tubes. We're already on the way, but I think it can be reversed because there are enough God-fearing people in this country, and we must not be ashamed of our relationship with God. And if we do, if we do, we're going to lose it. And the last thing that Tocqueville said is, America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, she will cease to be great. And we need to understand when we sing our national anthem and we get to that last line of the first verse, and it says, the land of the free and the home of the brave, that we cannot be free unless we're brave. Thank you very much. If you'll just indulge me for a couple of moments, I have a number of announcements that are very important to get by. I'll have my head down reading most of the time. I won't be able to see if you leave early, but God will know. Are you ready? 
We have a number of stand uh, t-shirts and bumper stickers and other items for sale at the registration desk. Here are our beautiful models. Hey, don't be a nerd. Be a cool and righteous dude and get one, okay? Thank you, models, for showing us where you stand. Remember to pick them up. Thank you. You may be dismissed. All right. Yeah, pick those up. There are lots of cool resources there at the registration desk. Be sure to go get some for you. Uh, once again, authorized taping or recording is not allowed here at the Values Voters Summit. If you do that, we will shut the government down. Oh, wait a minute. We've done that. Never mind. All paid registrants may vote in the straw poll that's coming up. Voting hours are from noon to 7 p.m. Friday and 7 a.m. to noon on Saturday. You may vote. You can scan your QR code on the back of your name tag. There's also a scan code on the sign at the top of the stairs if you do not have a QR on your tag. Vote at one of the computer stations located at the registration. Half of you are probably wondering what is a QR code. Next, FRC Action Pack is hosting a reception in the Congressional Room today. It'll be from 5.30 to 7, featuring Representative Mark Meadows, Jim Bridenstine, and Virginia Lieutenant Governor, Governor Candidate E.W. Jackson. We'll also be speaking later, uh, as well as a host of other candidates. The cost is $100 per person, and you can get your ticket upstairs at the registration booth where all the stand materials are. You must have a ticket to attend. All college and high school students, there's going to be a special mixer uh, from 5.30 to 7 tonight in the Empire Room, which is here downstairs. Young people will have the chance to ask questions about one of the hottest topics today. Perhaps you've heard about it, same-sex marriage. Many of today's youth have friends who view same-sex marriage as acceptable, and Ryan Anderson of the Heritage Foundation and Peter Sprague of the Family Research Council will take tough questions and also give thoughtful answers so the students can address the topic thoughtfully and intellectually from a biblical perspective. Plus, the dinner's on us. There'll be free pizza for everybody. All you need to do is show your student name tag for admission. The Association of Mature American Christians, which is the conservative alternative to AARP, is hosting a hospitality suite today from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the council room behind the West Registration Area, and everyone is invited. AMAC is an organization that advocates for the interests of Americans 50 and older. They speak out on the values we believe in, such as faith, family, and freedom, and aren't afraid to say we still believe in God and country. There will be a book signing from 5 to 5.30 this afternoon featuring Joel Rosenberg in the Diplomat Foyer, and Mike Huckabee will be doing a book signing this evening from 6.45 to 7.15 in that same room. We'll also be having several signings tomorrow. Uh, these are listed in your program book, but please remember to buy the books in advance and avoid long lines, uh, and that's located on the Regency Hall landing just outside the